everyone. George Bernard Shaw said once, don't wait for the right opportunity, create one. Here at the World of Music and Arts, we are creating many performance opportunities for all of our students, and we use the latest technologies to make it possible. My name is Anna Vavilova. I'm director of the World of Music and Arts, located in Richmond, BC, and it is my absolute pleasure to welcome you to watch our fifth international masterclass for our voice students. Joining me today is WMA voice teacher, soprano Hilda Lamb. Also, we have our invited guest who is joining us from Toronto, soprano Sarah Walsh. Uh, Sarah is our master teacher and she will be teaching uh, Hilda's students in an open public masterclass. Sarah has vast experience in performing and teaching. She appeared in many roles in opera and musical theater, and we're very happy to have her here with us. And our students, our, we have four students for you. It's Serafina, Joe, Hilda, and Jesse. We're very excited to get started. And I want to welcome Hilda Lamb to make her opening remarks. Welcome everybody to today's voice masterclass. My name is Hilda and I teach voice at World of Music and Arts. Before we begin, I would like to address a few things. First of all, thank you so much, Sarah, for joining us today from Toronto. I am very excited um, to hear about your experience and also have you share your expertise with my selected students in my studio at World of Music and Arts. Second of all, I would like to share a little bit of the benefits of these masterclasses. First of all, uh, for today's masterclass, our students will be performing live on their first sing-through, which I think is such a valuable experience, especially now in-person performance is still on hiatus. And not only does this give them an opportunity to stay motivated to practice, but also for them to get into the mode of performing live, experience the thrills and joy of live performance. Second of all, um, this is also a great opportunity, a learning opportunity for them to perform for someone else and get their advice and feedback. And here, uh, probably some technical and artistic advice recommendations that I have not given them. So something that they're not familiar with and they can work on these feedbacks. Now, a little bit about Sarah and I, we did our masters of music together at Western University and we studied with Jackie Short. We were both in the same studio, but what, what's even more great about us is that we made our art form debut in opera together when we uh, were casted in Britain's The Turn of the Screw in the Western University's production. And we actually uh, rehearsed under the direction of Michael Cavanaugh, who is absolutely amazing. And although we were not in the same cast, we still shared such a great experience together. Thank you so much again, Sarah. And now without further ado, I would like to introduce the first participant for today's masterclass, Serafina Kwok. She will be singing Castle on a Cloud for us. Please welcome Serafina. Serafina, you can uh, turn on your audio and turn on your video and we can start. Super excited. Let me allow you to turn on video. Yeah, go ahead. Now you can do it. Then? What happened? Oh. I think I had a re camera. Okay, switch. There you go. Hello, hello, Sarah. Hello, Sarah. Okay, there you ready? <laughs> Boys and girls, 
Nobody shouts or talk too loud. Not in my castle on a cloud. There is a lady all in white, cozy and sings a lullaby. She's nice to see and she's soft to touch. She says, "Cosette, I love you very much." I know a place where no one's lost. I know a place where no one cries. Crying at all is not allowed. Not in my castle on a cloud. Thank you. Thank you so much, Serafina. That was beautiful. Thank you very much. Is this your first master class you've ever performed in, Serafina? Wow. Well, congratulations to you. That is an amazing achievement. Thank you so much for performing. I can really tell that you've worked very hard on your music and that you and Hilda have worked hard to memorize it. Are you sing are you singing Memorize, Serafina? Yeah, good work. Awesome job. Okay, so let's talk about a few things. The first thing with musical theater that I always like to talk about with my students is the story. That's really what the most important part of musical theater is. Um, do, you, do you know about the character Cosette, Serafina? Is there anything you can tell me about her? She lives in a house where, where someone takes care of her. She, she has to, um, she has, she, she has, and Cosette has to do work because that lady who takes care of her does not treat her nice. No, she doesn't. No, that's that's very good. So, yes, Cosette is a complicated character, right? She's got a lot going on in her life. I think in this song, one of the most important things to, to you know, achieve is that it's very serious, right? It's, it's very serious, all of these things that Cosette is feeling. She, like you said, she's not being taken care of properly. She's away from her mom because her mom can't afford to, you know, keep her in her own home. Um, and she's, uh, meanwhile, she's a little girl like you, right? She's somebody who is still growing up, still learning about herself. And meanwhile, she has to, you know, deal with all of these really challenging things that little girls shouldn't have to deal with. So I think the most important thing to do with this song is to understand, of course, that there are all of these hard things going on with the character, but also that she has all of these dreams, right? She talks about all of these really lovely things that she's dreaming about. So I think that we need to think of spots where we can do, you know, something very sad where she's feeling something really deeply sad and then feeling something very, very happy right after. I find with, you know, emotional um, songs like this, it's really, really super effective if we can, you know, I would say color each of those emotions by showing you know, the, the opposite. So, you know, nothing is as sad unless like you, you can feel the extreme happiness of it as well. It really makes it almost um, bittersweet, right? Does that make sense, Serafina? Great. So let's talk about it. I'm just going to pull up. I have some sheet music on my computer here, so I'm just going to open mine up. There we go. Yeah, so at the beginning here, she says, there is a castle on a cloud. And that's, of course, that's going to be very happy. I like to go there in my sleep. Very happy still, I think. And then I think when she says, Serafina, when she says, aren't any floors for me to sweep, that's sort of when the sadness creeps in, right? She imagines, you know, this, this beautiful world where it's, she's so happy and then she's instantly sort of brought back to her reality, which is, you know, she has to do chores and things like that. She can't be in this, in this castle on a cloud all the time. And then the second verse, a room that's full of toys, amazing. I want a room that's full of toys. <laughs> and then she says, there are a hundred boys and girls because I guess Cosette doesn't see that many kids her own age, right? And then nobody shouts or talks too loud. That's again, something that's kind of sad for her. Not in my castle on a cloud. Then we get into um, what I call, I call the B section of the song. Do you, do you ever talk about with Hilda, like A section, B section, Serafina? Have you heard about that? It's okay. So um, with lots of songs, it's called an ABA structure, which means that there's a part at the beginning that sounds one way, 
a part of sandwiched in the middle that sounds different. And then at the end, we come back to that beginning part that sounded, you know, sort of like the main theme, which is our, there is a castle on a cloud. That's our A section. But when we get to the B section, which is the, there is a lady all in white, something changes there again, right? What do you think Cosette is feeling in this part of the song, Serafina? It's feeling happy. Yes, yes. Who do you think she's thinking of when she's mentioning the lady all in white? Uh, it's okay if you don't know. I don't Imagine, know. so who, I, I would say, in my opinion, I think she's thinking about her mom, right? Because <laughs> she doesn't really know her mom that well. So she's kind of got this, this image of her in her head that's sort of, you know, not fully... Um, like she doesn't fully know how to imagine her mom. So it's, it's kind of, um, you know, not super detailed there, but she is, like you said, very happy. And then I think when she says, Cosette, I love you very much, a little bit of sad. And then the end, I think it's again, more of the same b between happy and sad. I know I just told you a lot of information there, Serafina, but when I'm working with my students, I really like to talk through all of the words and sort of, you know, come up with ideas about how we could be feeling at, you know, every moment in the song. And, and the good thing about that is that it's not, you know, your teacher can't sit there and be like, you need to feel this here, this here, and this here. A lot of it is up to you, right? In the moment, how it makes you feel in the moment. So I want you to try and sing it again for me right now. And I want you to try and, you know, explore all of those emotions, Serafina. Imagine you are Cosette and you, you have these happy moments and these sad moments. Can you try again for me? Awesome, thank you. Music light, okay. Yeah, my mom turning out the music. Oh no. No problem. It's just, just me too funny. So just me one second. Um, yeah, that's definitely something different about this kind of masterclass. You guys have to do some yeah. tech stuff, which is, you know, you're doing great. <laughs> uh, yeah. Thank you so much. That was beautiful, Serafina. So with this sort of, you know, uh, I'll call it text connection, um, it's really something that we can work on all the time and always be making better. Um, something that um, I've taken from my experience um, with acting is, you know, we, we can take little notes in our in our music. I'm not sure if you've done this before, but sometimes um, I like to just sort of write down in my music little notes about how I might be feeling in, in every single moment. So you go through each phrase and just maybe you could write like um, joyful or, um, you know, uh, sad or heartbroken or any of those sort of things, just so you can sort of practice, you know, getting all of these different emotions throughout the song. Okay, that was so great. Now, the next thing I want to talk about, Serafina, is legato. Do you know the term legato? Mm. I forgot. That's okay. <laughs> That's all right. So legato is an Italian term. Um, and what legato means is smooth or, you know, joined together. Um, and legato is 
really, really important to singing. Um, the way that I like to think about it is that the legato is basically the way that all of the vowels are joined together when we're singing. Um, because of course, like we, we can't sing on consonants like, like S or something like that, right? Like I can't, that doesn't make a sound, right? Well, it makes a sound, but not a pitch. So uh, the legato is, is, is totally, you know, reliant on the vowels. Um, so what I want us to try is I'm going to ask you, Serafina, to sing the song again. And I want you to try and do it all on, do you have a favorite vowel to sing on, Serafina? Like if you're doing vocal warm-ups? Like A, E, A, O. A. Yeah? Okay, how about we do an A vowel then? So I want you to try and sing the song through all on an A vowel. I'll do an example so you can hear. Oh, my piano sometimes shuts itself off. That's no good. One sec, it's coming back to life. There it is. <laughs> so I want you to do it just on the A vowel. Okay, and why I want you to do that, Serafina, is I want you to feel like all of the notes in every single phrase are completely joined together like a column of sound, okay? So I don't want any breaks in between your breaths, okay? So you'll do a column of sound, breath, column of sound, breath, okay? And I want you to do that for the whole song. Do you think you could do that? Yeah, does that make sense? Cool, okay, let's try it again. Oh, could I have a time check, by the way? Yes, yes, we will. Uh, it's about four more minutes. Okay, great, awesome. All right, let's do it, Serafina. Okay. You're doing awesome, by the way. First master class, and you're doing so well. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, You're you welcome. Okay. Yes, mommy. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. That was so nice and smooth and joined together, Serafina. Now from there, we're running a little low on time, but I think you and Hilda can maybe try this in your lesson. Um, from there, the next step I would say is to try and sing without consonants, but with all the vowels that are already in the song. It's the next step. It's a little harder, um, but it's a good way to practice that legato smooth singing that I was talking about. You did really well with the ah vowel though. I really liked the sound of your ah vowel. It was very nice and pure and it really, you know, it made everything so nice and joined together. How did that feel for you? Good? Awesome. Very nice. All right. So I would say, Serafina, the main things I want you to work on with this song is the legato and the storytelling. Keep working on, you know, developing the storytelling. But I'd like to compliment you because I think that you're a very naturally, um, you know, expressive singer. I really, I got a lot of feeling from you there, especially on the second sing through of it. Very, very good. All right. I think, is that about as much time as we have for Serafina? Yes. Let me say thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. You are so welcome. Thank you for singing for me today. You did such a wonderful job in your first master class. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. I guess we should move on to the next singer then.
Yes, definitely. Okay, Serafina, you did very well. Thank you for turning off the camera. And the next is uh, Hilda, please introduce your next student. Our next student is Joe Tillman, and he will be singing Bring Him Home, also from Les Mis. much joe how are you today uh better now that i got through it <laughs> i think you did a really fantastic job with that song thank you this song um i'm i'm a huge les mis fan big mm -hmm. fan um this song is totally known for being like a mammoth beast song like it it is it is not an easy song and i think that you did a really wonderful job with it today how long thank have you. you been working on it if you don't mind me asking um a few months um oh. I don't remember when we started. I think in September, late September is when we started. Yeah, it's it's really coming. I think that this is one um, as well, like since I said it is such a, you know, kind of a monster song. Uh, this is one that I think will be really interesting for you to track progress with because mm -hmm. um, there's so much that you can do with it. Yeah. Um, but I think that it's really well in hand to begin with. Um, I want to compliment you on your tenor. Um, uh, usually the the biggest challenge here is is those high notes right they're they're quite they're quite yeah. up there how do, how do the highest notes of this song feel for you like would you say they're comfortable or no no they're, they're shaky for me I, I I've like throughout my lessons I, I couldn't even start I couldn't even get to those notes to begin with and Hilda really helped wow. coax that out of me and, wow um I mean she's been great but yeah starting out with this I I sound like a, a screeching cat <laughs> So I, I don't believe that necessarily, but, uh, yeah, but I, it, I, I, it, I think it, it sounds moved into great. it. Yeah, no, okay. I, I really think it's, it's um, something like 
And, and especially once, is this your, your first, um, you know, few months of taking voice lessons? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think you are currently on the steep incline, which is awesome. Um, right okay. when you start, especially as an adult student, things, you know, improve quite quickly. So I think like, even though you said, um, maybe they don't feel, you know, 100% secure right now, I think that, you know, it's going to come before too long because the sound itself is very, um, nice and I, I find the timbre of your voice quite um, pleasant so I think that you, you have a lot of potential Joe um, okay let's let's talk about it a little bit so um, sort of like what I was doing with Serafina um, just with musical theater in general and you know not not just musical theater art song as well but the difference between musical theater and art song is that you have you know this um, dramatic narrative that you're pulling from so there's lots of context um, you know, lots of information before and after the song that right. we need to consider. And um, I find musical theater just to be like so heightened in its emotional delivery. Mm -hmm. um, do, do you know um, sort of like what the, could you tell me a little bit about what the story is here and like what's going on in context? Well, it, it just, um, it, it's, it, it's a an older gentleman that's that's concerned about this younger gentleman wants him to come home safe and mm -hmm. is will is basically willing to give up his own life mm -hmm. for the safety of this younger man so he can move on with his life absolutely yeah, yeah. and i think i think a really important thing as well is um that valjean sort of sees a little bit of himself mm -hmm. in this young man and maybe he also kind of sees that maybe Marius is living a life that um, Valjean wishes he could have lived, you know, because he didn't have those opportunities growing up. He came from, you know, a really rough past and Marius right. has lots of opportunities. So maybe, um, you know, he's, he's sort of like reflecting on his own life as well in the, in those moments. Um, also like, you know, he, he's, they're on the battlefield here. This right. is extremely vulnerable for both of them. Um, and before and after the scene, there are separate battles where, um, you know, various members of their their party are dying. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that, you know, first of all, Valjean doesn't know if he's going to come into the next scene, if you will, alive. Right. Neither right. does he know if Marius, this, this man who he's made a connection with, will as well. So yeah. there's a lot going on. And then last thing, I or one of the other super important themes here is um you know Valjean's relationship to God, right? right? Um yeah, I think he is almost like he's almost ascending into like a one-on-one -on -one conversation I think with God here. It's very very personal. Yeah, and, and when he when he's saying, you know, you've been there before my time in need. Keep doing yeah. it, you know. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah step Absolutely. up and, and uh, do this for me. Yeah. Totally. Okay. So that's sort of um, you know, the the um motivation, if you will. Now, how do we apply that? This song, I think, is is um, particularly, um, the sectioning is, is really interesting here. The, I can think you can feel the emotional changes super distinctly, especially when we get to the Piumoso at He's Like the Son I Might Have Known. Yeah. Right? Like, before that, we have all of this legato um, dotted rhythms and such. And then I think things need to really kind of shift here, mm -hmm. almost like he's, he's, like I said, ascending into this conversation with God near the beginning. Things are more peaceful, but then he's suddenly agitated, I think, there, um, just because I think he's sort of realizing that so much is on the line. Yeah. I would say for you, Joe, the way to heighten that mood instantly um, with vocal technique would be to increase the crispness of your diction there. So I think... Yeah, it, it's almost more speech like there than than sung. So mm -hmm. I want you to feel like um, you're really accenting the consonants there. Mm -hmm. And then when we get to the summer's die, that's where things, you know, again, sweep off into this legato, um, but super, super uh, passionate there. And then, of course, things come back down. And I yeah. really want you to um, did you have a pencil with you there? Yes. Uh, wait, I did. It was stolen. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay if not. That's okay if not. Yeah, okay. Um, and then at I am old. Here, sorry. Hold I on. Yep. Hold on. <laughs> no problem. I'm asking you to do it on the fly. Got it? Oh, 
Is my sound back? Yep, you're good. Oh, oh can you hear us? Speaker. Uh oh. Can't hear you. Oh, that's why. There we go. Testing. Perfect. Hello. Okay. Got it. I'm great. Back. Awesome. Okay. Great. So I was just at the um, diminuendo at, and I am old. So um, diminuendo of course means you're kind of bringing things down, um, mm -hmm. you know, not only volume wise, but sort of, I, I would say for me, diminuendo can almost be a feeling. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I really want to hear a distinct difference between the feeling and the volume of the summers die one by one, how soon they fly on and on. And I am old and will be gone. That's I, such I actually, a different feeling. I, I imagine that as almost like a realization. Yes. That he has. Yes. Um, where he, he's angry because he's realizing, yeah, I mean, life is fleeting. Yes. And then it's like, well, yeah, and, and I'm old. I'm, I'm going to be gone soon. So mm -hmm. it is fleeting. Absolutely. Kind of like a self-realization. Absolutely. Um, and then to the end here, we have a lot of, you know, more the same as the beginning, but I, I want it to feel like it grows to the end. Mm -hmm. I think the trouble with this song and, um, you know, it, it, it is a, um, a song where vocal endurance is something we really need to consider. Yeah. Um, if you kind of go, you know, ham from the beginning with the, the volume and the mood and all that sort of stuff, there's almost nowhere to go. Um, so I really want to feel like it's sort of like the whole song is a, is a crescendo, if you will. Um, and it, I mean that emotionally, um, you know, vocally, all that sort of stuff. Right. Um, lastly, before I get you to sing it again, um, I want to see sort of when you're sustaining higher notes, and this goes for the whole song, I want to just see some jaw release. Mm -hmm. um, I think that I like that your jaw is closed, um, especially with musical theater. I find if we do the bel canto or like classical um, vertical jaw positioning too much, Sometimes it can lead you to overblow the voice. Mm -hmm. So I like that your jaw is closed down, but I do see it clenching. So we sort of need to find a balance between it being, you know, a streamlined, um, you know, column of sound. Right. However, I don't want to see clenching. So if you feel like you're kind of starting to lock up or anything, try and open a little wider, or even you can put your hands sort of on the side of your face just to sort of feel it. Have you had yeah. problems with jaw tension in the past? Yeah, and Hilda has been working with me on it. And, yeah. and, th and this movement right here exactly is like, this is one of the things that kind of helped me break through. Yeah, of yeah. I didn't think of it during my performance, but you know, <laughs> that's okay. No, it's hard to do those um, exercises while you're performing, especially. But now that <laughs> yeah. we're sort of just working through it, um, right. if you feel like you need to reset halfway through and do that, go right ahead, okay? okay. So let's let's sing it again. And, and just to recap the goals I want here from you, Joe, is to get more... Um, dynamic and emotional um you know variants and then also trying to release the jaw a little bit especially on the higher sustained notes okay, okay? all right okay okie dokie whenever you're ready got it god on prayer in my need you have always been there he is young he's afraid let him rest heaven bless He's like the son I might have known If God had granted me a son The summers die one by one How soon they fly on and on And I am old and will be gone Bring him peace joy he is young he is
is only a boy you can take, you can give, let him be. Very nice. That last note is, yeah, it's hard. Yeah. Have you worked at all in your, I actually heard it come out this time. So I, I imagine maybe you've done a little bit of work with it um, with uh, falsetto. Um, during my lessons? No, yeah. but in, in my past I have. Yeah. I think that might be an interesting um, road for you to go down. You know, typically this song, um, the first few uh, phrases are sung all in falsetto. Um, or at least when he goes higher, he's, he pops into his falsetto. And then same with the ending there. Um, I'm not going to ask you to do it right now because that is <laughs> definitely, um, it's a bit of a journey. So yeah. I'm not going to, I'm not going to ask you to do it right now. Um, but I'm sure Hilda would be able to help you kind of, you know, um, discover some of that. I, I will say that once you get into that register, it definitely makes um, large chunks of this song way easier. Though I yeah. think that you, it's, it's really impressive that you can, um, felt that. I think that's awesome. It's like, I mean, you can, you might as well have both, right? Okay. I, I just you. want to say also, um, the connection that time was much stronger. And I also got a lot more difference from you, especially at the end. Um, yeah. where was that? Hang on. I'm just trying to look at my music. I, I was here. consciously trying to build up to crescendo right, right there. Absolutely. Yeah. And that, that phrase, the, if I die, let me die. Yeah. is killer on the breath and you totally pulled it off very okay. very good and then when you got to let him live that's where i heard that kind of falsetto come out and it was it just makes it really sensitive right it's a different color of the voice compared mm -hmm. to um you know your full uh belt sound so i think that could be an interesting thing to discover um also another thing i'd like to compliment you on is your vibrato it's really good really Thank really you. good yeah Okay, let's see here. How much time do we have left? Five minutes, perfect. Okay, I think we can probably get away with one more sing through. So this time, Joe, I actually want you to do this thing um, almost every time you go up. So maybe just keep your hands there. Uh -huh. um, so for example, God, or what's the note? God on high. Yeah, so I want you to, as soon as you get to the high, high, hear my prayer. Okay, hear so. Hear my prayer. Okay. Yeah, that honestly, even just that little bit that you did there, it created a lot more loft in your sound. Um, let's quickly just jump into it one more time because I don't want to go over time um, and try and get that that positioning. Um, but yeah, better overall. <clears throat> okay, can't can't count for the the durate the uh, stamina of my voice at this point, but we'll we'll give it. Okay, a all right, it's all good. God on high, hear my prayer in my need. You have always been there. He is young. He's afraid. Like the son I might have known 
If God had granted me a son, the summers die one by one. How soon they fly on and on. And I am old and will be gone. Bring him peace. Bring him joy. He is young. He is only a boy. You can take If I die, let me die, let him live, bring him home, bring him home, bring him home. Thank you, Joe. That was that actually made instantly such a big difference. Did it? Did that. it feel different for you? It did. And, yeah. and I was more comfortable seeing in front of you as well. So it yeah, all yeah. Came together. yeah, totally. No, I think that was the most successful one yet. And actually, um, just before I let you go, I think that that positioning actually brought you sort of into your, your falsetto, like I was talking about at the end there, mm -hmm. that last note, it almost had a lightness to it. Um, mm -hmm. that, that I, is sort of what I was talking about. Okay. Um, and it, it just, it opened up your sound quite a lot. I, I really think that made a big difference for you. Thank you so much Thank for uh, singing for me today. That was really wonderful. It was my pleasure. Thank you for listening. Yep. My pleasure as well. Bye. -bye. All right. I think Jesse's next. Let's welcome Jesse. And she'll be singing Oiseau, si tu les en. Hello. Um, can you hear me all right? Okay. Yep, I can hear you. Oiseau, si tu les en. Vous changez de climat, vous changez de climat, de que le twist y va, de vous y ne bocage, ce n'est pas seulement, vous changez de voyage. Jesse, that was lovely. Thank you so much. How are you today? Good. A bit nervous. That's okay. It's totally natural to be nervous for performances. Um, in the past, I, I have really struggled with my own performance anxiety. Um, but I don't know. I'm, I'm sure that you've heard this before. I like to try and think about it as um, you know, channeling nerves into excitement instead, because the two are very, you know, very closely linked, I think at least, um, similar feeling, uh, sort of jittery and stuff like that. But thank you so much for, um, for doing that. It was really, a really wonderful job. Um, okay. How long, how long have you been singing for Jesse? Um, one to two years. Awesome. Very nice. Well, I think that you have a lot of potential and I, I think this is a great piece for you. Um, how long have you been working on this piece for? 
Um, a few months, maybe. Okay, awesome. Um, so first, um, and I think I'm going to make this a running theme for today. I always like to talk about the text uh, before, um, you know, doing anything else. I feel like that's a good place to start, um, just to make sure that you know we know what we're talking about, um, what our intention is. Um, what does the text mean to you, Jesse? Um, it's about the bird traveling around during different seasons. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, so of course it's all, you know, it's a very beautiful scene being set here, right? Um, it's sort of saying, I think that, um, you know, the birds fleet around as the seasons change, right? Um, however, I think that the um, sort of flip side here is saying that um, the birds kind of like uh, certain people, I suppose, or, um, you know, life in general, it's very cyclical, right? Like they'll, it's saying the birds basically will move wherever the springtime is, and they're not going to stay with you forever. Um, so I think that that can mean a number of different things. Um, I think that probably what it's, it's trying to relate to is love. Um, how, you know, some, sometimes love can be fickle and unkind. So there is sort of a, you know, a double um, meaning here. Um, especially, I think, when we get into um, the section on the second page, the uh, ne vous permet, ne vous permet d'aimer, that part um, is, is sort of very sad, especially the way that it moves down um, through those triplets. It's very kind of almost mournful. Um, and then at the end, I think we sort of need to change the mood again and get a little bit more playful. So let's say our moods here are the beginning is sort of happy, fun, talking about, you know, beauty and, you know, changing of seasons. Then when we get to, uh, what's the notion? That's where it gets sad. And then sort of when we get to, that part is sort of the, um, you know, switch around. So we think about it as happy and sad at the end. It's sort of that bittersweet feeling I was talking about with Serafina. Um, let's, let's just jump right back into it, Jesse, and try it again. Um, and try and get some of that emotional um, change. Oh, it's getting very bright in my room. Sorry, the sun just decided to come out here. <laughs> Si tous les ans vous changez de climat, vous changez de climat, de grand et triste hiver, de bruit d'abocage, et c'est de passer la nuit, vous changez de feuillage et pour rêver de nos climats. Mais votre destinée. Awesome. Okay. Next thing I think we should talk about um, is breath direction. Um, and that's something I, I, a term I use a lot with my students is, um, you know, breath is one of those things with singing that takes forever <laughs> to, you know, be fully, you know, lined up with. Um, I, I don't think that, I don't know, I don't want to sound negative about it, but it's, it's one of those things that like, we, we just need to keep thinking about new ways of trying to connect our voice and our breath. Um, I always say the breath is the motor 
that's running our singing car, if you will. <laughs> um, so if it's not, you know, fully connected, then sometimes um, the voice can suffer for that. I think you're, you're off to a good start with your breathing though. Um, I just mostly want you to think about it in a different way. And what I mean by that is when I take a breath and sing, I like to think about, you know, my voice going somewhere. So the breath is taking it you know, away from my body, if you will. Um, we don't want, you know, our voice to stay inside. We need to send it outward. Um, my philosophy on, on breath in general is that it's better to spend a lot of air than to conserve air. Um, and that can be something that takes time to get used to because, you know, if you're, if you're really spending a lot of air, sometimes you'll, you'll run out before the end of your phrase, right? And it, we don't want that in performance. However, when you're working on your technique, I find it's a really good way to sort of, you know, proactively um, increase your breath support. Um, so yeah, de definitely, I would say thinking about conserving is not the way to go. I would say spending air, using extra air is always better because then the voice, you know, it has such a good cushion to sort of take off with if there's lots of air behind the voice. Um, some sort of imagery technique that I, I use frequently is um, sort of like a point moving away from the body. So um, I want to try and get us doing this a little bit, Jesse, and I'm going to give you some examples. This song is constantly starting low, moving high, going low, moving high. There's a lot of, you know, ascending passages, um, which the, the, you know, the phrase ends on the highest note of the of the phrase, which is sort of really challenging because typically by the end of a phrase, you're like, oh, I want to breathe. But then it's like, no, we're doing the highest part of the phrase right when you're sort of lowest on air, which is why I think we need to sort of really feel like the breath is ultra motivated, lots of air coming out um, to move the sound forward. Okay. So the first example here in the song would be um, vous changez de cli or changez de climat. Okay, so I wanted you to do a point up and over that. That I think you sang beautifully, though. I loved how your jaw dropped on the changer. And then we have des que le triciver, des pouilles nos bocages, ce n'est pas seulement pour changer de feuillage. This part's all pretty, um, you know, low, lower energy. And then here, this phrase is so hard. Uh, the May votre destiné, may votre destiné. Okay, so I want you to do that pointing gesture at that part, okay? And then this part. Oh, yeah, we have the Okay, so any of these phrases where the voice is moving up quickly, I want you to try this pointing thing. And I know it seems kind of silly, but um, sometimes, you know, the physical aspect of it can trick your brain into doing something um, that you might not have expected it to do. So almost some of my students, I say, imagine your voice is sitting on the tip of your finger and you're kind of directing it somewhere. Okay, so up and over and you can kind of... Um, do it, do it freely. And actually maybe you just watch me while we're, while you're singing and I'll point with you. Okay. Okay. Let's try it again.
Nice, Jesse. Very nice. I heard some really lovely opening there. How did that feel for you? Um, better. Better. Good. Awesome. Then the the sort of ultra challenging part of this song is um, Mozart famously is very cruel in his endings of his songs. Um, I always find that it's sort of like a huge marathon because the beginnings and middles are, of course, they're hard. They're hard. Mozart's not, you know, making it easy for you. Um, however, the ending is always killer. And I think it's because, um, you know, Mozart was sort of writing for these, uh, I'll call them like Olympian singers, like they, they were just built for it. Um, and, you know, we all are, I think Mozart's music is hugely singable, um, and something that we can really track pro progress with. Um, so what I want to do, Jesse, are you able to drag your track um, to like halfway through the song? Or is that? Um, yeah, okay. Because um, just I'll tell you where I want it in just a second. But what I want you to do is um, at this ending here, the um, very last line of the song, I want to just see some um, more jaw release, okay? So I'm gonna ask you to put your hand kind of, actually more on your chin like that, yeah. Um, and I don't want you to force anything. Like I don't want you to pull down too hard on anything. Um, but you know, I, I do want you to sort of guide your jaw down, especially when you get to all of those high um, entrances into it. Okay, so really up and over the top. Um, I sort of like some imagery in terms of, you know, high um, entries like that. I like to imagine my voice almost like coming up and over the top of it and sitting down on top of the note. Instead of feeling like you're reaching up, you can instead feel like you're kind of like popping down, which is definitely, um, you know, I'm sure that in your, your two years of, of taking singing lessons, you've heard lots of, you know, interesting um, imagery stuff, which is sort of, it works sometimes, sometimes it doesn't, uh, but a lot about singing is imagining our voice doing things and then sort of seeing if it'll agree with the way that our brain is thinking about it. So that one has worked for <laughs> a number of my students. Another way to think about that up and over approach, Jesse, would be imagine like throwing a ball over a fence or something like that. Goes up and over instead of, uh, you know, reaching from below, okay? Let's try and drag the track to... Um, okay. And it's okay if it's not exactly there. It, wherever is um, easiest for you. different yeah I find sometimes um especially with um changing jaw positioning it can feel really scary at first because you're like you're not sure where your voice is gonna go with that new positioning um it's especially hard when you're up as high as you are singing so I I think that you did amazing with that that was already a big difference um yeah I think I think we're pretty much um up with time for you Jesse but you've done so well today is is this your first master class as well Awesome. Oh, everybody's doing such a great job. All of you. This is amazing. Um, well, yeah, I hope I hope that you keep working on this song with Hilda because I think it has so much potential for you. Very, very beautiful singing. Thank you. You're very welcome. I hope you have a good day. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Now, finally, um, let's welcome Hilda Tam with The Water Is Wide.
Thank you so much, Hilda. Thank you. That was so beautiful. How are you today? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. Good. Awesome. Um, how long have you been taking singing lessons for? Um, around uh, March last year. Wow. Very nice. Awesome. Um, and how long have you been working on this piece? Um, around the start of January. <laughs> Nice. Yeah, this is one of my favorite pieces. It's such a beautiful song. I find it, um, I don't know, almost like a, a joy for the voice. It's so, so comfortable. And um, yeah, I, I love, um, you know, traditional folk songs, especially when you're, you know, you've just sort of started on your vocal journey. It's a really great um, device to sort of learn a lot about your voice and how it works. Um, and I think you're doing a really great job with this. You and Hilda have done a lovely job so far with this. Um, so again, we're going to start sort of the same way as I did with the other three, talking about the text. Um, what does the text mean to you, Hilda? It, it's definitely romance, about romance. And mm -hmm. I guess it's about um, the struggles in a relationship. Absolutely. Um, I, I keep saying this word today, but it, it is something that I, I think about frequently with my own, my own performances. Um, the, the feeling of bittersweetness um, is so uh, poignant, I think, um, just because, you know, it, it really, we can't just sing a song happy um, because I, I, I guess, I guess I'm being a little bit reductive, but, you know, I find the happiest of happy is much more colorful when it's sort of, you know, uh, balanced with a little bit of sadness. Um, and that's definitely very clear in this song, right? This, this person is, is talking about, um, you know, getting on a boat, uh, which is, of course, symbolic. Um, they're getting on a boat and um, the, they both shall row, my love and I. Um, and then sort of just talking about, you know, some turmoil that they, they face at sea. Um, and then, yeah, but this is the part that I think is the most um, effective in the song. And I think you made it very sensitive, Hilda, the, uh, but love grows old and waxes cold and fades away like morning dew. Um, it's so beautiful. Oh, you, you really did bring the text to life though. I think we can always do more though. That's sort of what I was saying to the other students as well. Um, we can, we can constantly uh, refine the way that we express our words and, and our text when we're singing. Um, so yeah, I'd let, let's maybe just talk through this quickly because do you have your, yeah, you have your sheet music there? Perfect. Um, I think that the dynamic markings in this are incredibly expressive, right? Uh, they're all over the place and lots of crescendos and decrescendos and yeah, tons of dynamic change. So I maybe let's just jump right back into the song. I don't want to give too many things to do in one go. Um, but I want you, Hilda, this time to try and, you know, continue heightening this, this intention that we were just talking about. But I want you also to do it while using the dynamics, because I think that the dynamics are sort of um, here to help us paint the text a little bit more in detail. Okay. Okay. Whenever you're ready.
very nice. Thank you. That was that was already so much more um, full of life. Like I I think that that was really lovely. I want to compliment you, Hilda, on um, something that uh, mine and Hilda Lamb's teacher always said to us was that um, a piano dynamic is not necessarily always a sound; it's a feeling. I find sometimes with uh, piano dynamic, people bring it so quiet that you can't even hardly hear it. Um, however, I think that yours rung out really nicely. And in fact, I think that you, um, I don't know if you did it actively, but I did get a feeling from it. So yeah, I think that goes for everybody in the class. Um, it's good advice. I, I didn't think about it until like last year when, when Jackie, our, our teacher told us this. Um, but instead of bringing down your piano dynamic so far that the audience can't hear you anymore, think of it more as a, as a feeling. And maybe that sounds a little bit like kind of woohoo, but <laughs> try it, try it in the practice room. And uh, I think you'll, you'll, you know, sort of hear a difference. Um, and it, it's again, sort of like a, a color change, if you will, instead of a volume change. But I, I think that you did a really lovely job with that, Hilda. Okay, so let's see. I think that the next step, Hilda, to heighten this is diction. I think I need a little bit more um, of the consonants from you. I'm getting quite a few, um, but I have the music right in front of me and I can see the words. So I'm not sure if, I don't know. I, I think that I, diction is again, one of those things that we can always add more to. Um, when you know, you're know you performing professionally, I mean, I think Hilda can agree with me, Hilda Lamb. Um, when you're in opera or you know, you're know you performing on stage, um, there's spit going everywhere because the, the performers are so um, you know crisp with the way that they pronounce things. Um, I remember when I was you know sort of starting on my vocal journey, I thought that was preposterous. I was, <laughs> I did not believe it, but it's totally true. Like when, when you're up on a big stage and there's, you know, other musicians playing, um, there's, there's, you know, fabric, fabric everywhere can suck up your sound and make it sound like totally dull. Um, so more is more when it comes to diction. Um, it's certainly not COVID appropriate though. So thankfully we're, we're over Zoom right now, <laughs> but you know, for, for when all of this is resolved, nothing wrong with a little bit of splash zone in the front row, in my opinion. <laughs> okay, so lots of consonants, especially on the ends of words. Um, I think that, yeah, there's lots of really descriptive text in here. So we need to make sure it really comes out. Um, and then also one, one more thing, and I want you to practice this this time we do it, Hilda. For Singers, it's a huge challenge to be engaged during the um, beginning, you know, sort of uh, accompaniment and the ending accompaniment. Um, and I don't think that, you know, singers actively try and check out, um, but it is, it's an easy thing to do if you're, you're focused on your performance to sort of ignore the um, background music. However, what I think is to make it a really cohesive, you know, group effort. If we were, you know, not in COVID times, you would have a collaborative pianist with you and you would sort of want to make it like you two are a, you know, a team, you're, you're kind of there together. So it's important for you to, you know, engage with their music um, so that they can fully engage with yours. And then it just, it, it, it sounds um, like maybe the audience wouldn't notice that sort of thing, but they totally do. It really, it, it brings out such a sensitivity in, in performance. So I want to see if you can sort of be in that moment from the very first notes that the piano plays to the very last notes that the piano plays. Okay. So yeah, let, let's do it again. And we're going to keep kind of layering things like we've been doing with the other students. Okay. So this time, Hilda, I want you to focus on being engaged with the accompaniment the um, consonants and also continuing this, this dynamic, um, yeah, this dynamic growth, okay?
<laughs> That's okay. Are you okay? Uh, yeah, I'm okay. Do you have water with you? Yeah, good. We love water. Water is so good for the voice. <laughs> okay, that was beautiful. Again, very beautiful. Thank you for being so, um, all of you, so open to all of these suggestions. That is definitely, um, you know, master classes are especially challenging and nerve wracking because somebody is asking you to change the way that you think about your song right away. <laughs> you don't get time in the practice room. You don't get time to talk to your teacher about it. You just have to kind of dive in and do it. So thank you all for being so um, open to it. You're doing amazingly. I love it. Um, okay, now I'm going to get you to do one more thing, Hilda, before your time is up. Okay, I'm, like I said, I'm throwing a lot of stuff your way. So um, you're doing amazing. Okay, so this thing, I mentioned um, this with Serafina at the beginning. We did an ah vowel with Serafina, uh, but I am going to challenge you, Hilda, to try and sing the song again, um, but only with the vowels. Have you have you done this before? Um, I don't think so. It's okay. Um, so whenever I ask my own students to do this, they're instantly kind of like, what? That is going to make my brain go into like overdrive mode. I can't do that. Um, the best way to think about it um, is to basically form your mouth in the way that you would to say the whole word, but don't let the mouth close down or let the tongue move to, you know, articulate words. So I'll try and do an example so you can hear. Pretty much just imagine saying the words, but holding your mouth open instead, okay? Um, and it doesn't have to be perfect. Like, I'm not going to sit here and be like, your ah vowel should have been an ooh vowel. <laughs> I'll tell you why we're doing it just in a second. So that would look like, Okay, so it's not perfect. Even mine was like kind of a little, not quite right. But pretty much what we're trying to do, Hilda, is trying to create a seamless legato. Okay, so we want that column of sound. As of now, you know, we've we've crisped up your consonants a little bit, um, but you know. Some singing teachers teach that um, you need to steal from the vowels to make the consonants more prevalent. I think you can have it all. I think you can have long vowels and crisp consonants. Um, so we're going to do it. Okay, so let's try first. We've worked on consonants. Now let's focus on vowels. Um, and just do your best. If you feel like you're confused, um, switch just to an ah vowel, okay? Okay, let's try it with the track one more time.
Well done. Thank you. I'm it's it's totally okay that you didn't do the all of the vowels and I'm glad that you kept going Hilda. So try and practice that. Um like I said just before you started this section, master classes are so hard cuz the person's like just do it now. Um but sometimes you need some time in the practice room to sort of make those connections happen. So I definitely want you to try and take that away um today and work on it. I think that um you know, sometimes when when students do these sort of legato activities, um, you can really see like big holes in the sound. Overall, I don't think I heard hardly any in yours. The only spot I heard it really clearly was that, um, oh, love is gentle. There was a bit of a break between gentle, okay? So just any anything like that, like two syllable words, we really wanna get them stuck nicely together. Um, yeah, let's just very quickly, uh, we have about a minute left or a minute or two. Um, let's just quickly try and put it all together. We don't need the track for now, Hilda. Um, I want you to um, just sing up until, um, probably just the end of the first page. Um, so up until, my love and I. Um, and I want you to, you know, think about this legato that we've achieved. Think about those consonants and the dynamics. <laughs> it's a lot at once. So you could do it. You're doing amazing. Okay. So just try the first page. You can try it. Um, are you comfortable singing without the track or would you prefer to sing with it? I can sing without it. Okay. Whenever you're ready. The water is white. I cannot. Beautiful. Thank you, Hilda. Okay, I think that's that's everybody. Yes, Hilda is our last participant. Thank you. All right, teacher Hilda Lamb, please. The word goes to you. Yes, thank you so much. First of all, participants. Round of applause. Ew, this is such a fantastic um, experience for me as well to see all of you perform in, in this setting and, and you all managed wonderfully. I am very, very, very happy and congratulations. This is such a great milestone for you. Thank you so much, Sarah, for joining us today, giving your time, the expertise and managed to, to make singing so much fun for all of us with, with being online and stuff and still having um, this sort of interactive element. So thank you so much. It was it was a joy. Thank Seeing you so much for having me. And uh, yes, congratulations to all the participants. You've all done such a wonderful job today. Um, and for your first masterclass, like it's not easy to do, um, you know, online like this, but I really, I would like to just compliment all of you on the way that you were able to, I was able to connect with you uh, musically. And I think that your your performance skills, you know, transcended Zoom, if you will. So I, I'm really um, happy to have been involved with this. Very, very lovely job. Thank you. Thank you both, Sarah, uh, our master teacher and uh, teacher Hilda Lamb. It was very, very, fun class it's usually fun for me to see our students i don't see you guys at all so it was amazing and i have certificates that i'm going to award each participant i will email everybody the certificates and i also have the hard copy i will leave it with your teachers so also uh there will be certificates for appreciation to Sarah and teacher Hilda and uh, it was such a such a wonderful opportunity also uh, before we sign off 
I am going to screen share. We have another masterclass next weekend. So I'm going to screen share and uh, play a little trailer. And other than that, teacher Hilda and uh, Sarah, okay. please say your goodbyes. And uh, we will definitely see you again. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you very much, everyone. All right, I'm screen sharing. All right. Oh, that's, we'll do this one.